So am I, are you saying that I'm breaking the law by walking from here to there? You could be, yes. I could be? Yes. So you're saying that I am? No, I'm saying you could be. What does that mean? Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we are in Park County, Indiana, where we get confronted by law enforcement for walking across a field. Enjoy the video. How are you, sir? What's up? You're on private property. This is? Yes, sir. Am I? Yes, sir. Okay. So, if you want to come in and film, you can pull right in here to our parking lot. Film to your heart's content. Who really owns this property? A farmer. A farmer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want to look it up and ask permission for them to come on their property, you can. That's the right thing. Now you don't need to ask permission to come on property. They have actually, to. They actually, have to have no trespassing signs. No, they don't. Yeah. No. Let me I explain to you. Did you get asked to trespass me? No, I'm not trespassing. I'm telling then you. You don't have any authority to trespass me. You're on private property. Right, but I'm not trespassing unless I've been yes. asked to leave. No. Yes. Land use without consent. I'm not using the land. Yeah, you are. You're filming. That's use of the land. I'm walking across the land. If so. you want to come in here and park, that's fine. So no, am I, I are you saying that I'm breaking the law by walking from here to there? You could be, yes. I could be? Yes. So you're saying that I am? No, I'm saying you could be. What does that mean? I could be if the farmer asked me to leave. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm not unless the farmer asked me to okay, leave. I'm, I'm telling you, you're on private property right now. Thanks for telling me, brother, but that was a totally loaded statement, man. Well, I don't need your you, help you anymore, you brother. Okay. I don't need your that's help. Fine. Thank okay. you. This You're is, dismissed, this is a my restricted man. Area. Where? From the sign right up here, so you can go up here to the front. Okay. You want to come up and show me the sign? Mm -hmm. White sign right there. Now see, that's a restricted area back there. There's a sign right here. See that sign? Did I lie? Did well, I lie? you're dismissed now. Huh? You're dismissed now. I don't like you coming out telling me that it's private property acting like I'm doing something wrong. I, did I say you're doing anything wrong? Did no, I, but did you, I you, you coming wrong? over and you doing all this, you know that's kind of loaded, man. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I can come talk to you anytime I want. You can right? come talk to me, man, but when you imply like, hey, you're doing something, that's kind of like... Like no, but, you've but, got you've got the power to enforce laws in Indiana. Correct. Right. So when you kind of when you're telling me I'm doing something, I get the in, I get the kind of the implication from you that you're almost but, but, implying that I'm breaking a law. But that's on you, right? No, it's not on me. You yes, approach yes. me and you tell me, "Hey, you're, you're on private property. If you want to go over there, you can." Which implies you can't over here. <laughs> but I could over there. But it's private property, correct? It is private. Oh, well, I don't know. I will look it up on GIS. That's fine. You can. And, uh, That's the school yeah. property right over here where you parked is the school property. That's owned by North Central Park Community School Corporation. That is private property. This is the sheriff's office property. This is public property. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you even aware, man? It's crazy. So you're a law enforcement officer. They're about to pass a law um, that says that if somebody violates that sign, you can take them to jail for trespass. Did you know that you, they, they're about to pass a law like that? It's House Bill 1338. Did not know that. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. And I almost thought to myself, well, if they're about to pass a law that says if you enter a restricted area, you can be trespassed. It almost would make a, a reasonable person think, well, then it's not trespassed yet, not until they pass that law. You know what I mean? What are, do you have any thoughts on that? Or are you going to refrain from commenting? I haven't read the law. I really have no idea. Okay. What's your name, brother? I don't think Detective I got Detective Sergeant Corey Hutchins. Detective Sergeant Corey Hutchins. Yes, sir. All right. Good to meet you, Corey. Nice to meet you. Did I pass, did I pass so far? Well, I'll tell you, honestly, man, I think that I'd work on the approach. I don't I do not do fail or pass. Okay. I just come and show people well, that, what I mean, goes I, on. I, I, I just come I, and I, show I, people what goes on. And I have certain problems with behavior. People that watch, maybe they don't have a problem with that same exact behavior. I'm gonna tell you if I got a problem with it, but I'm not gonna be aggressive. I'm just gonna tell you, hey, I think that was a little bit. I do think that was a little bit off. Well, I'm gonna tell you but, that. But but if you if you really wanted to, if you wanted to, yeah, you didn't have to park behind a, a tractor trailer on school property and walk all the way across the field. You could have pulled in the parking lot. We could have had this exact same conversation. I, I guess I could have. What's your point? But you want to you you want to invite a conflict. 
If you want me to come out here and have a conversation with you all day, I'll come out here and have a conversation with you all day. Corey, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think a reasonable person would conclude that because I parked over there, and you're right, I did park over there. Mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that a reasonable person would conclude that just because I parked over there, now I'm looking for a conflict. And I don't think anything so, I've said to you since so, I've so interacted it, with you has, has so, indicated that to you at all. Eh, maybe. So if I parked across behind your house across well, your neighborhood well let's not let's not try to equate my house to your workplace okay if I, that's if, not if, that's if I, not if, it if i parked behind your work okay and walked across private property yeah up to you to the side of where you're working at what would you equate that to yeah. am i a private worker or am i a public worker and is my employment a public place or is it a private place what's the in this hypothetical it really wouldn't make a difference well it does because a person has a right to be on public property and a person doesn't have a right to invade uh, oh, a person, a, a, a workplace, a person's a workplace, property? a person's a workplace without their permission. You cannot invade somebody's somebody's property. Invasion would be would be in an, an invasion would imply that you're not allowed to be there. Okay, but right. do you understand what you just said? Walking across somebody else's property. To I understand. Come over? You said I said you're not allowed to invade somebody's property, and you're not. Nobody's allowed to invade somebody's property. Right. Right. So would entering onto your property be invasion? It would be invasion if you were expressly not allowed to be there. And the way in Indiana that you that you communicate that is either by painting purple on tree signs or posts mm -hmm. or no trespassing signs at a reasonable distance between each other so that a reasonable person crossing the property wrong. could conclude. Wrong. I don't think that's wrong. I think that that's it's clearly established. It's the main entrance. It's at the main entrance, right. Mm -hmm. so, so a reasonable person would conclude any, that at any, the main entrance there's a no trespassing sign and you any, can't go in the whole property. Right. Right. But you don't right. have to see it. Well, a reasonable person would have to conclude that you couldn't go on the property. Now, if a main entrance, what would a main entrance, what would define a main entrance? A fence, right? Doesn't matter. Well, what would define a main entrance? It's if it's posted. It'd be something that the courts would come up with. So us talking about it would be kind of ridiculous yep. right here. Anyways, okay. but what I'm saying is there's no, no trespassing signs. There was no verbal communication that I couldn't go on it. And there's no purple indicators around it that you can't go on. Ultimately... This is trying to, what you're trying to do is you're trying to but, say that no. I could have been breaking the law, but I couldn't have because it's it's clear what's required to trespass. It's either you have to have been expressly forbidden to be on the property or you have to have an indicator around that says, hey, this is private property. This is off limits. You're not allowed to be here. Okay. And that's that's from what I understand. And but, but, here, but do you understand my point of view or somebody else's point of view on it? If you were walking across somebody else's field, if this just, was a just, private, just to come here. if just this was a private uh, security place, if this was a place that people consensually came and delivered money to uh, a business, and that business, cons on a consensual basis, provided security to those people, and I just started waltzing on over to you, I'd understand you completely coming out and being like, "Hey, brother, you know, come over here. What are you doing over here? May you know, maybe you need to leave if, if you're doing some weird stuff. You need to get out of here. But if it's public property." You're, you're, public like, you're not on public property. That's what I'm telling you. Right, but it's not your property. If it was your property, that'd be a different thing. It's not your property. That's none of your concern. He, he decided not to put no trespassing signs up. How do you know? Because they're know not him? there. Do you know him? They're not there. That's how I know he decided not to. I mean, he's got a sizable so, so, portion so, of land. He so, probably has so a sizable so amount of know, money. So you know that that person made a conscious decision not to post that property? They right. didn't. Yeah. I mean, so do you have no trespassing sign on your property? No. So you made a conscious decision that I can go on your property? Yes. I think it is unwelcoming. I think that it's kind of ugly. But that's just my decision, okay. you know? Yeah. But and, you but you wouldn't you, want you wouldn't want me standing on your property, right? Well in in your official capacity I would tell you to leave. I would okay. say, sir, you'd have to you I'd, I'm gonna ask you to leave now. That, that would be perfectly fine. Yeah. And I mean, and but you, so, I'd expect you to pretty much do the same. I'm a stranger. You know what I mean? I'd expect you to say on your private property, hey, buddy, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Family, so you got to get out. you got to leave. Yeah, so yeah. I expect the same from you. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's public. The standards are different. You, you keep trying to equate public and private, and that's where I make I, the distinction. I, I understand. Yeah. Right here, you can stay all day. Can't Right. Out. Okay. <laughs> right, right. I get you. I get the point. <laughs> I understand. And, and, and there, I mean... There, see, this is this is established case law. I believe that the the reason that the trespassing law is being changed so that you can trespass people with this is because one of, of people like me who go around to, in public recording stuff that can't be allowed. But then also well, I there think was you a can record all you want. No, I don't care. Maybe you don't care, but there are other people in your position who do. And well, you're being recorded by probably about 30 cameras right now. Very good point. Right. Very good point. But I think that 
the, the case law that actually the, the judicial, the appellate court said, you know, hey, wait, maybe we need to redo the law here. It was a case in which a gentleman was on private property. He was in the parking lot of a store in Vincennes. I think it was RCA. I think that was the store. And a long time yeah, away. it's a long <laughs> way away from here for sure. But in Vincennes, the guy's behind and he's sleeping under a tractor trailer. He's a homeless gentleman. Mm -hmm. And the police come over and they say, hey, you know, what are you doing here? The police allege that the property owner had told them previously, if you see somebody back here, I want them out. I don't want people out here. So then the police you know, took action on this alleged previous statement by the property owner. I asked the property owner. He said he didn't remember it. But either way, uh, the, the police take him in, criminal trespass. He gets convicted in the district court. But then the appellate court says, look, police can't trespass somebody from private property unless it's clearly posted because they aren't agents of the property. And the trespass law says you have to be asked by the owner or an agent of the owner in order for the trespass to be legitimate. That's the only reason I am very adamant about that is because there is case law very recently. It was 2019. What's the case? Couldn't tell you. If you want to give me a card, I do have the case saved on my computer. I can give it to you and you can take a look. And I'll even send you the law if you're interested in it. And you can just, if you would, if you if you want to do this, if you want to give me a card and I can do this, you can send me a confirmation email. I got it. And that way I'll know that you, you saw my email. Because it's very interesting. This stuff has been going on for a long time. I've been threatened with arrest for it. And now all of a sudden they're making a law. And so it seems to me that either they, they think that there's a slight possibility that it doesn't win in court. And so they're just covering their ass. Or there's literally no chance they win in court, and they're making something new, right? To, to you know, I, I create would, a I would power. still say that if you disobey the restricted area, yeah, you're being told to stay out of an area. You still have a public place, right? To be and a public access to the building, right? So, yeah, you have the it'd other be building. Thing, it'd be the same thing if you jump that fence. Into uh, yeah, well, and that's an interesting thing. So I think that there is a law that governs that. I'm pretty sure that there's a law that governs breaking into the detention facility. But that's inside of a fence. But but the same thing. If you would if you disregard right. disregard the sign, same way as disregarding a fence. Well, the sign. The thing with the sign is is that basically you remember that pesky thing in the, it was like the 1770s and all these Americans were like. No representation or no taxation without this representation thing. Mm -hmm. And they all they wanted all the rules that they had to follow to be passed by a legislature. And so basically, that rule isn't passed by a legislature. That's, that's the problem that we have. So if you're going to be enforcing rules on public land that we all have a right to be on, but then you're going to restrict the right to be on certain public land, there's got to be a legislature has to okay. you know, so draft and, and, and approve that because that other... If you don't have the legislature, then you are missing the element of taxation with representation. Then you're moving to these kind of, sometimes it could be unelected officials that are able to draft up policies for their own, you know what I mean, the, their own stewardships, if you will, and enforce they them on people do. arbitrarily. Yes, they do. But if it, there isn't a law behind it, it's unlawful. And most people do get pressured by the court system. It costs a lot of money to get an attorney. It costs a lot of money to fight charges, even if they aren't necessarily... Even if they aren't very, you know, filled with merit. So most people just go ahead and, you know, plead guilty to something. Hey, you know, no jail time, a little fine. Okay, I'll get out of it. It's much better than going to a jury trial where when you've got all this uh, propaganda on the TV where anybody who opposes the police is a libtard idiot who just, he, he doesn't have a brain up there. All he does is, all he wants to do is just flip off the police all day. Right. You know, that's the propaganda that's all over the, the TV. Well, it was all over the TV in 2020 um... during the George Floyd protest. There were two bits of propaganda. There was a propaganda that was against the police. There's a propaganda that was for the police. But even the propaganda that was against the police was so unintelligent in nature that nobody of any sense could could ever subscribe to it. So you know what I mean? Well, if you there, ever, was a, there was, oh, let me stop you. There was a lot of people that subscribed to that. What I would what I would determine as ridiculous propaganda against police. There, and don't say there wasn't yeah. a lot. There was a no. lot of people. No, no, there was a lot of propaganda that said it was a lot of propaganda from socialists. So these socialists, right. they want to they want to create policies right. for everybody else to follow, and they want to enforce them on these people at the right. point of a gun. Right. But then they want to abolish the same people who are going to enforce it for them. Correct. And so they're complete hypocrites, right? So yeah. that, so they are an, they are a bunch of idiots. That's that's from the standpoint that I have as well. Mm -hmm. I don't like the police. I've, I'm from a different standpoint, right? and I don't I don't have anything against you as an individual, but public official you you do things to people you you work on the taxpayer dime 
Right. I don't believe in, I don't believe that that's a morally righteous thing to partake in. That's my opinion. So you, you would be more of a, um, the word just escaped me. Um, I'm what you call an anarchist. I, okay. I, well, I would, I wouldn't go that I far. I would. That's that's what I describe myself as. I believe in a society in which consent is is the master of all. I mean, most of the time, we look at at uh, societies. So, so, you're, so, so you're you subscribe to the theory that if I was abolished, the police, yeah, the jail system was abolished, that or your position, not you, but your position. Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm. Yeah, that's fine. That that the rule of law will be the point of the gun. The rule of law would, well, the rule of law would still exist in some form. And it's been shown to have existed in other so, forms in history without it, a government. It's been shown to have existed right, on per, a voluntary per, basis. Personal. No, no, no. It's been shown to, to exist in a country as, as large as Ireland, as large as the Republic of Ireland in the 1400s. So it has worked before, and it's worked on, on large scales as well. It's just that every now and again, these guys come in, they got a lot more power than everybody else. They got these but, superior but, weaponry, and they come in and they conquer Correct. And so, but nowadays, I've got this idea. I'm looking around. I'm like, guys, it's 2024. There are bazookas out here. If we abolish the government, you could get a bazooka. And if somebody came up to your house and wanted to steal from you, you could protect your family with with superior firepower or with at least equal firepower. Or and that was a problem before. Or because there's no consequence for any action, I could come to your house and take whatever I wanted and there'd be no consequence. Well, there's no, that that's not true because there are consequences. And most of the time for people nowadays that break into people's houses, a lot of the times those people go unpunished. There are no consequences because either they skip town or they never get caught. And, and a lot of the times, some people that are getting their houses broke into are felons. They're not allowed to own firearms. And so they can't, they can't protect themselves against these intrusions. And ultimately what happens is you get a lot more injustice. I think that if everybody understood, everybody understood from from the day they could understand things, that hey, you're responsible for yourself. If you if you start a banking company, if you start an automobile company and you go broke, we're not getting the taxpayers to bail you out with billions of dollars. I don't I, believe I, in I that. agree, I can agree and you know what? Exactly, and if you wanna go in, and if you wanna go and buy a house, if you wanna own property, you have to take responsibility for that property. That's your property. If you if you don't tend to your garden all summer, the bugs and the weeds will take it over. Right. And if you don't defend your property, the 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 thugs and the criminals will overtake it or they'll destroy it. Mm -hmm. And this is real life. And so I ad, I advocate that everybody take responsibility for themselves. I think that if somebody came into my house, mm -hmm. see I'm a convicted felon. I'm not allowed to own a firearm. Okay. But if somebody came into my house, I've got I'm about to have my second young kid. I've got one kid already. I've got uh, a girlfriend as well. I can't defend them with anything other than my arms and my legs and possibly a knife if I had it. And, and the thing is, is man, I just think that if anybody came into my house and wanted to steal from my family, it, as the situation that you came up with would, it would suggest, if they came into my house and did that and I wasn't a felon and I was allowed to have a firearm, I would be infinitely safer than in today's so, society. So now, let me, let's take a step back. Yeah. Personal you being there. What happens if you're not there? Yeah, exactly. Then what, what then, then then it's then, only my girl's arms and legs. No, and she's I'm, a much a here, much here, smaller here, here's, person. Here's what I'm saying. If you're you're, which I'm not going to change your mind. I understand that. That's completely probably fine. not. Okay. If you're not home, and somebody breaks into your house, nobody's there. Nobody gets injured, yeah. and they steal your worldly possessions. Yeah. And, or and, injure and, my girl. I'm, I'm just saying there's yeah. nobody there. You, yeah. all, all that happens is pro is property theft. Oh, okay. I understand. All I'm, all I'm I saying is property right. theft at this point. Okay? Right. If law enforcement. In, in your world, your worldview is abolished, then what recourse do you have? Well, and that's an interesting thing because we don't live in this world. And so me, right. me theorizing would be exactly that. It right. would just be right. me saying, okay, and, this is what I think could happen. And, and, and I think a million things could happen because we look at the private economy and if you were to say, hey, you know, uh, what do you think would happen with cell phones in the next 30 years? If you said that 30 years ago, you'd be wrong. Right. Okay, where you, I don't care who you are. You'd be wrong because nobody can predict how the private economy works. But, but, and this but is the same with police. Right, but your but your theory is that, or your stance, I guess, would be that you would be willing to try that sort of anarchy with the entire society. You would be you would be comfortable with that occurring just to have that social experiment. I would be comfortable with it occurring. I would be way infinitely more comfortable with it occurring, and I'll tell you why. And and this is and. This is, 
This is so serious that I don't think that this conversation would ever do the topic justice. That when you are in this world, it's a bad world, you have people that are criminally inclined. Mm-hmm. Right. They're felonious people, they're terrible individuals, and bad things will happen no matter what. In an anarchic society, it won't be a, a utopia. It will, there will be problems. People are bad. But when you have a government apparatus, say just for example, the likes of the federal government, mm-hmm. and you get, say for example, a criminal running it, one of those, just one, criminally inclined individual can do infinitely more damage than he could have done if he worked in the private sector, if he didn't have those resources of the state apparatus. And the examples that we have in history are Stalin, Hitler, we've got much more Mao, we've got so many examples in history. I mean, hell, I'd even include that guy, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen from The Dictator. I mean, have you ever seen that movie? It's insane. No. It's crazy. you got to watch it. But look, these people are bad people. Some of them aren't. Some of them aren't. The thing is, is when you have a democracy, when you have a republic, four years down the line, Maybe there's that bad person, just wait. Right. And and what we've already gotten to in the United States is we always espouse that we're free and that everybody else, you know, thank God you don't live there, right? You know, we're, we're free here. But if you went anywhere else and you check their statistics, anywhere else in the world, you'd see that per capita, they have a lower incarceration rate than, than the United States. You'd see that on the books, they have less laws. They have less, you can violate less laws by doing more acts. In any other country in the world, we have the most laws on the books here in the United States out of any other country in the world. In right. history, by the way. Oh, the I, Soviet I, I, Union didn't even didn't even come close to us. And they were tyrannical. Well and and, and I, this I, is the reality. I, I would say on that point They don't. I, it, I don't know I statistically. I, statistically, yes. But you're kind of conflating two different you're, Well perhaps. Because you're 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 conflating a single state run country with a multi state run right so your federal government influences people like you with uh, or sorry not people like you but organizations like this sheriff's departments they organize they they basically influence everybody through their money they say look you get federal grants if you do xyz if you don't do xyz let's face it we're going to inflate the dollar to the point where you just can't afford anything sorry you know and that's the that's the reality of it so the federal government may not have the whole puppet strings but they're controlling the puppets that are controlling the sheriff's department. And I'm telling you, this is the way that the finances look on paper. People don't get money in, in local governments. They don't get real money unless they're getting it from the federal government. They get multi-million dollar grants from the taxpayers. If you were to try to extract multi-millions of dollars, you know, Park County, it's not a very populated area. Try to extract $50 million from these taxpayers, it broke. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. So they can't. Oh, we can get $50 right. Yeah. And I know, and I know you don't, but I know there's maybe, there's some millions here at some point in time, the building, the construction, the cars, there's some millions around here. And so, and the point is, is that a lot of this stuff can't happen without the federal government. And I don't think any, look, I'll be surprised if anybody argues at this point that the federal government isn't run by crooks. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't think that there is. And the, the state governments, I believe that, I mean, it's, it's docu- well documented, even the highway speed limits are influenced by the federal government at some level. I mean, they, they well, are, they're directly. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there's nothing in the Constitution that provides for the power for the federal government to do that. So they, they mm. get around it by saying, well, we're not going to provide you funding unless you build them it, and you put these speed it, limits here. In the Constitution, no. But you're looking at the Commerce Clause is what, you're, what you'd be looking at. A lot of people, a lot of people... See, and, and, and that, but that's in a whole other argument. And you're stre- you're stretching it a little thin there, and I I understand yeah. that you're stretching. I'm, and they've I'm, stretched it paper thin by oh, this I, point. I agree in yeah. in parts, in parts I agree with it, in parts I don't because they're stretching it thin. It's like ranchers can't even grow crops to feed to their own cattle without the federal government. And I promise this is a case law. I forget the case law, but a farmer or a rancher is feeding his own cattle. He's growing crops to feed his cattle. And the federal government says, well, because you're growing crops, sir, because those those products aren't being sold into interest rate commerce, you're affecting interest rate commerce. So we can regulate that. And they, they did. They regulated it. They fined him a hell of a lot of money. They probably put the guy out of business. This was back in like the 1940s or something. I would, I would look that up and see where he was growing the crops. It was on his property. I mean, it was on his own property. Well, was, but I, would, I would see where, what state he was in. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Because... You're looking at um, federal lease lands is probably what you're thinking of. Ah, if, if, he, I think if, so. he's, if he's growing crops on his ground his. and he's running cattle on federal ground, then you're They had they had a little something with that, but even then the, the BLM in two thousand three went out 
you know, with that rancher, I think it was out in Texas, and they, they ran the BLM out of there, the Bureau of Land Management. That was Nevada and Oregon. It was in Nevada. Hmm? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. They oh. ran those pieces of the crap out of there. They said, get out of here. You don't tell me what to do. And that was awesome, I thought. Because well, this guy's been there for centuries. He's got total homesteading rights to this land. No, he doesn't. Well, why is he there still? Uh, because he wasn't. He he was leasing ground and not paying for they it. They never kicked him out. They tried. They Black tried. Black Cherry did. So. Did they? Yeah. How do you know? You should look. You should. Look. I'll look him up and go, we'll put go, it in the video and I'll go, put it in if I'm wrong too. Because go, I don't know, but I assume they go, never go kicked re, him out. Go research him currently. Okay. Now, he, he won the case in Nevada against BLM. Okay. And I, I will say that BLM did him wrong to begin with. Is that right? Oh, yeah. 100%. Because they, same thing with you and me. Me and you have a contract or an agreement. Yeah. I get to rent a room in your house. Yeah. Okay? You say, okay, well, I'm like, I'm not going to pay you. I'm not going to pay you this month. I'm not going to pay you next month. I'm not going to pay you for 15 years. And you let it go. You let it go. Oh, you're a nice guy. You do this. You do that. Whatever the case may be. 15 years down the road, I want my rent. Well, I'm not going to pay you. I haven't paid you in 15 years. What's your recourse now? All right, but did he owe him that money in the first place? Hmm, yeah. Every, they, I mean, did he contract, or is this another yeah, one of those it, it, social contracts? No, this, they got this, the, is, this is a, a, a ranch. Because I signed a contract with a BMV. No, 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 no. But no, I don't no. agree to it. You know what I mean? Is no, it one no. of those contracts? This is, this is like if, if your neighbor would be leasing you ground in the backyard to grow a garden on or to run some cattle on. It's the exact same thing. Right, but it is the government as well. So but, you got to keep but, in mind, is it some, but, something's changed with the government. And I'm not no, but, privy to all the ins and outs and of it. So, and so my thought is on it, BLM was wrong in the initial part. They yeah. should have been even paying the entire time. Huh. And because he was taking ground that somebody else could have been using and paying the fees to have their cattle on there. Huh. So his neighbors could have been leasing that and he's on it. And maybe his neighbor was paying the money to the BLM and no. leasing ground. Yeah. And I could I could find a problem in there somewhere. I always could. But I think but that... It's, it's the same thing as, as me leasing a room for you. Except I'm... I would make you pay because it's my money that I'd be wanting, not the taxpayer money back. You know what I, you know what I mean? That's my problem with it. But you're, but it's the exact same... It's a, it's a similar concept, I guess. If that is what happened, and I'm not familiar with the ins and outs, I just watched all the YouTube videos where the, I, the I protesters would, are out there. and I would... Um, <laughs> they're running them off. Well, that's the problem is you're watching somebody else's It's context. Fox's. It's all Fox. Well, you're watching somebody else's context on a, yeah. on a real situation. Yeah. Most of the time when I'm watching Fox News, though, and I see something that's not too, like... It's not too beneficial to the government most of the time. And, and this goes to CNN, NBC. I feel like they're all just state media outlets. When I see anything on there too critical of the government, I just think, oh, they're really being particular here. They're really picking and choosing what to criticize. I, I don't know if you if you really, you know, it's it's two different perspectives, you know what I mean? Because you live the life that you live. You're in the profession you, you're in. I'm in the profession I'm in. I, we see two different perspectives when we see the same media. Obviously. But, um... Like for example, I saw um, I saw just the other day somebody who does what I do there out cop watching. This is like a 60 year old woman. Have you have you seen anything? the internet's blowing up with it? This is a 60 year old woman in Dallas Fort Worth. Got um, anyway, she got attacked. Her face is so busted up. She's mm -hmm. like swollen shut. Her eyes are. Her head was leaking. Her arms broken. There's other stuff, but that's just stuff that I know about. And um, it was a it was a cop that did it, and when so obviously prosecution then files charges on her, she goes to jail. But then the media, all the, the it's NBC, releases a media report. She sustained injuries during the arrest. They put it in the most the most just soft way. You know, it suggests it just happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it, it. Yeah, she was being arrested. You know, a series of unfortunate events, and now she's just all bruised up. Like, no, that doesn't just happen. If somebody was was mugged on the street, they wouldn't say yeah, during a mugging she was injured. Like, no, this guy assaulted her. He brutally assaulted her and stole all her money. You know, that's what they would say if it was a mugger. But since it's a, a state agent, it to me it appears that the media has softened it down a little bit. I don't know if it's in fear of retaliation or if it's because they are in they are in fear of losing sources. 
Because a guy like me, I don't get any sources. The, right. the, the government doesn't want it to give me anything that I don't have. You know, I got to go get it all. Or I got to find a whistleblower, and I've never found one of those yet. <laughs> so it, unless I find something like that, I, I got to go get my own story and, and create my own story. And these guys, they get it to them. You know, they get an email. They get a press release. Hey, you know, this is what happened. Check it out. And so right. maybe they're afraid of losing that. I don't know. But it seems to me as though there's a double standard when it comes to reporting, when it comes to to big mainstream media. And I think that most people agree with that nowadays. A lot of, at least 50% of the country, because if you've got that many Trump supporters, at least 50% of them understand this is fake news. These people, this is a deep state operation. The, the deep state, the CIA, FBI, the powers that be are obviously telling these big, massive national news corporations what they can and can't run. And they do that through the SEC. You know what I mean? They, they, they don't let any electronic communications go throughout those uh, those TV towers unless the government approves of it. you got to get a license if you want to have a national TV station. Right. So unless the national government's okay with what you're doing, you're not putting anything on TV. That's just the reality of it. But it's, it goes a lot deeper than that, man. And I, to be honest, I don't even know how we got to talking about this, but it's <laughs> it's getting pretty dark over there. Yep. I'm going to go into the jail and see what's right. up in there, and I'm going to head out, brother. All right. All right. Good meeting you. What was it again? Corey Hutchins. Corey. All yep. right. Good to meet you, Corey. Nice to meet you. Take care. Clean her out. We're gonna have the inmates out here clean. I guarantee it. Something of this sort. The gun lockers. visits of this piece. My goodness. What do I have over here? They got some big vehicles over here. Oh man. That's the farmer's property. No, that's probably the highway department right there. To be completely honest. <laughs> 